agenda over here. So okay. I'll go ahead. Do then I'll, I'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. Uh, I am Don Ames. I represent Ward 4. And tonight I'm acting as a chairman. Uh, in case there's a tie, which there shouldn't be with three of us, uh, I do get two votes. Just so you know that ahead of time. Uh, roll call. Ty, let's start with you. Ty J, Ward 3, resident. Dave? Failed all, uh, Ward 6. Dave, are you able to gain more volume than that? How about that? Ward 6, Dale Dole. Is that better? Not to me. Can you hear all right, Sydney? And I can I can hear, yes. Okay. Uh, and again, I'm Don Ames Ward uh, 4. Before I'm Pat I, the next thing we should do is <laughs> public hearings. And I'm going to uh, suggest because of the long agenda, uh, I propose we uh, simplify the proceedings by having each of the individual public hearings just prior to the appropriate section uh, that we're going to discuss rather than going through all eight of the public hearings at one time. And so if someone would uh, move to do that, I think that would be helpful. Is that a standard procedure? I mean, do we normally do something like that? Is that something Pat can chime in on? It's an acceptable procedure uh, and it, it can be used from time to time. If you wanted to group items, you can. Uh, Bama does it. We did it this last meeting, matter of fact. Yes, okay. I think with so many individual or with so many cases, I think it would be very appropriate to do that so that the public hearing could be held and then the comments immediately addressed voted on so that someone you know that started first won't work until the end to hear the result. Yes, that's what Obama does. If there's someone who has an issue with a certain item on the uh, the grouping, you can say I'd like to talk about item A, B, C, D, or E, which everyone may be listed. There you go. Yes, sir. Okay. Make the motion that we uh, we follow that proceeding and uh, Kind of group them together as we go through this to simplify this evening's uh, long agenda. Ty J, I'll second. Okay. Uh, those in favor? Uh, aye. 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 Dave? And I, aye as well. Okay. So we will now, we'll do the public hearings individually in front. Let's uh, look at the minutes real quick. Anybody want to uh, have a comment on the minutes or want to move for approval? I move for approval on the minutes. And of course, I'll second those. I'm sorry, did you second them, Dave? Yes, I did. Second Thank those. Thank you. Uh, let's uh, do a roll call tie. Aye. Dave? Aye. And I'm aye as well. Thank you very much. Uh, we have no old business, so we'll move into the uh, appeals now. Uh, we'll start with the appeal case uh, 0920, a request by Chad Williams for a variance to the side yard setback from 10 foot to 2 foot to accommodate an addition or remodel at 369 Bay Shore Drive. Um, do you want to uh, give us some staff information, Sydney, before we? Sure. Proceed? So, um, is it, first of all, is anyone here to speak either for or against this project? I don't see anybody, but just, okay. Yeah, it, it actually doesn't look like anybody other than the applicants are here, so. Yeah. Um, okay, so what I would say is that um, basically for this appeal case, um, the applicant is wanting to do an addition to the home and they're wanting to go the normal side setback is 10 feet um, and they're wanting to go within two feet of that property line. Earlier I think on Friday I emailed a, um, a list of the neighbors that you know basically were in support of this. Um, and then also in your staff report, you can see the illustrations of the 
home and, um, you know, what they're requesting the variant for. They do have a little bit of a topographical challenge on the other side um, where they do have the most land available. Um, so anyway, I, I can let the applicant speak to the nature of his request. Okay. Uh, yes. Chad Williams is here, but my video is not working. So, but you guys can hear me, correct? Right. Okay. You don't need to see me. I can do all the speaking that I need to do. So I apologize for that. I don't know what's happening. And hopefully I can share my screen, Sydney, if I need to show some exhibits and kind of, kind of talk through stuff as we go through. But, but again, I'm here uh, representing the owner, uh, Mr. Baxter. He's, he's in the audience as well tonight. Um, the, the site is at 369 Bayshore Drive. The subject property is 2.4 acres. It's, it's a big lot. Um, and right now we're just going through some preliminary designs to do uh, addition, garage addition and renovations to the house. I think the house was built back in like 1955 or something like that. It's an older ranch style house, maybe not that old. Um, and then I'm, so I'm gonna flip over to, um, to share my screen. Is that okay, Sydney? I actually do not have hosting abilities. Um, oh, I can do it though. I can do it. Okay, there you go. Can you guys see this? I hope everybody can see the screen. Go for okay, it. Okay, good. So, um, and if, if it lags or something, just tell me and I'll kind of slow, slow down and go back and repeat myself. Um, this is the subject survey. Um, this is how the house sits today. Uh, driveway comes in off Bayshore, um, comes up, loops back around to the back. The lake is back here at the back of the property, if you're not familiar where Bayshore is at, at the back of the property. The uh, new site plan uh, that we're proposing is here. It's basically a uh, two-story addition over, uh, let's say the three-fourths of the house going to the north property line to create a two-story structure. There's a garage addition here. Um, and I'm zooming in, so give me just a second here. This is the proposed setback that we have the encroachment on and it's, it's in your packet as well, uh, but it's the shaded area. Um, real quickly, I did a calculation. This setback of 10 foot, this whole piece of uh, that encompasses the setback is 3,659 square foot. In the corner tip barely encroaches, well, it encroaches into that space by eight foot. And that's why we're asking for the, for the variance of eight foot. But we're only asking for 82 square foot of encroachment, which equals 0.02% of that entire swath of land there. The challenge with going to the south side, it does drop off, um, which would then be creating a three-story structure, as well as we have septic system over here and our fill lines due to the house not being on city sewer. Um, that's kind of the that, that kind of plays into the uh, staff report um, under guidance for approval item number A dealing with topographical challenges. Um, let me see what else I have. The from the real quick from the front property line to the garage. This is the garage addition that that protrudes. The distance from there is um, I have it. It's 155 foot from property line to the garage, still set way back off the street. The adjoining neighbor to the north from the proposed property line to his house is approximately, according to Google Earth, 130, square, 130 linear feet to his structure or his house. So there's still a huge buffer, you know, going to the north between proposed or the property line to, to the existing structure. Um, Let's see if I had anything else. Um, and like Sydney did say, they're supporting documents in your packet that you guys got emailed, um, you know, supporting the variance request since, you know, according to this, it's very minimal that we're asking for. That's really all I have. Um, I have some renderings in the packet as well. You can kind of see what we're doing. This is on my screen here. This is the garage coming out. This would be the front that's, that's 130, uh, 155 foot from the front property line. Um, you can see how the grade drops off here, which would be creating, you know, the three-story structure plus the septic tank and the field lines are here as well. That's really all I have. If you guys got any questions, I'm here to answer anything. Uh, if need to, the owner is in the audience as well, but uh, that's all I have. And thank you for your time.
Well, I have a question for you. You faded out just a little bit at one point. The person okay. who lives on the north property line, are they one of the nine that have signed this uh, petition? Uh, I believe they, I believe that they are. I would have to ask Brian. Um, Brian, can you chime in on that as well, if you don't mind? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, one of the nine is my brother. He is actually, the house to the north is actually my brother's house. The last name is Meyer. He's my step brother. Okay. 355, would that be the right address? That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thank you. May I ask a question? Sure. Um, uh, just technical questions, just for education. So um, with this uh, request going to two feet from the 10 feet, um, I guess this question's for staff. Um, what about um, the right of ways for utilities, any poles running through there, anything that the county is gonna be upset on? I mean, I don't know, I don't know how this works as far as why the 10 feet's in place and what do we need to allow for as far as the only thing I can think of is utilities. Help me out. So typically the 10 foot setback is there just to help ensure that buildings are not built too close to each other. Um, sometimes there is a public utility and drainage easement, but um, in but the rear of all properties have the 10 foot public utility and drainage easement. And most of them have utilities in the front, especially in your newer subdivisions. This one does not have a utility easement on the side property lines where they're asking for this variance. Okay, thank you. Any other questions, Dave? No, okay, I have no other questions. So could I have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve based on the findings of fact. Okay. I'll second that. Thank you, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, let's, we, we have to do this legally. I'm sorry, we'll take the, uh, the vote now. Ty? Aye. Dave? Aye. Um, aye as well. So uh, the applicant has received uh, a, a positive appeal. All right. Do any Thank you, Gasper. About anything, uh, Sydney, on that? Um, so basically, I'll go ahead and comment and just say that any, so that in this, we have conditional uses for businesses. And you can follow up with Caitlin Shin in our office if your use is approved. If you're asking for a variance or to build a structure, you're actually going to work with the codes department next. Um, and they, I've already got everything uploaded into our database um, to based on the approval of your project. And if, um, and so you'll be able to work with codes and go ahead and get your building permits and things like that. So um, after your item is heard, um, you'll be able to leave the meeting. Any questions about that? Thank you all. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have a question just so I understand that specifically every item tonight, including this one, um, it says we're addressing from 10 feet to two feet. So that's what we address. We're not addressing any other line items you just talked about, right? That's correct. Yeah. And just goes with all these others, like all these others talking about building this, building that. But specifically, they're talking about the 10 feet rule. A lot of them are. We're just talking about that. We're not talking about any other building type things. That's correct. Okay, there's thank you so much. Yeah, there's one item that's not a setback item uh, that's the second to last, and it'll be other things. Um, but this particular one is just asking for a variance to the setback to say, hey, instead of 10 feet, we would like to be two feet off that property line. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. The next item is appeal case number 0920-2M, request by Lee Blazier for a conditional use permit for a recreational training school, martial arts at 300 Freehill Drive. Uh, this would be an opportunity for uh, anyone, I'll open up the, uh, uh, I'll open up the uh, discussion for anyone outside now. Okay. Anybody? want to talk on that other than the applicant? Okay, then we'll uh, consider that the uh, uh, public hearing is closed. And uh, Sydney, do All your right, thing. Uh, <laughs> All 
All right, I and I believe the applicant is here so he can speak to it, but um, basically this is an industrial zoned property and on Freehill Road and the applicant is asking to do a, um, a martial arts studio there, which is considered a recreational training facility um, in, um, I, I wanna say about 2000, a little over 2000 square feet of the property there. Um, Monday through Friday, and then also Saturday mornings. And I'll let the applicant present his case. And if you have any questions, I'll, I'll be happy to answer it at the end. Okay. Okay. Mr. Blazer. We don't have audio. Can you hear me? Now we can. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, Yes, I'm trying to open up a karate school at the location 300 Free Hill Drive. Um, the approximate uh, square footage is 2,500 square foot. And uh, mostly my hours of operation would be Monday through Thursday from about 3.30 or 4.15 to about nine o'clock at night. And the surrounding businesses, there are two uh, businesses beside me, a bathroom uh, supply a business, plumbing a supply business, and a um, food distribution business. And they close at about four o'clock. So my business actually really doesn't conflict with their hours of operation. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm going to use about 2,500 square foot. And there's about 11 spaces of uh, parking available for my location. OK. Uh Anybody on the board have a question? Um, I have a housekeeping question first for Sydney or Grant. Um, the paperwork that I had in my um, packet on the front page, it says the applicant is requesting two comma 6,000 square feet. So what is that number that's supposed to be on this sheet? Yeah, 2,600, yeah, 2,600 square feet. Okay, so the last zero is, is I can just check that off. So it's 2,600 square feet, okay. And I did confirm with the owner and there are actually 30 spaces on site. I have a question on some lighting. I just see one, uh, one light stick. Is that gonna be adequate for folks that come out of there at nine o'clock in the winter time when it's dark. Of course, they're going to be martial arts. They'll take care of themselves, but is that going to be adequate uh, for, uh, for lighting needs? The owner uh, uh, assured me that there's plenty of outside lighting for the parking area at night, sir. Okay. That's the only question I have. Okay. As far as city staff goes, I mean, we, we don't have a requirement for a, a, an existing building like that for security purposes, but uh, um, but that is something that, you know, is a, is a good comment. Well, okay. I'm looking at um, Google Earth right now, and I see two, what appears to be two light poles on the parking area. So maybe the front page is one and well, I guess a little bit, I guess you can see it maybe on the back of the page, you get two pictures here. It might show it a little bit better. Uh, Sydney, did I, or Grant, did I understand that it's not really within our purview to be concerned about the, uh, or to, to act on anything relating to lighting at night? Well, I'd probably say on that, it's it's something to, to consider in, in, the, in your consideration, but uh, since it's an existing building, we wouldn't look at, you know, as, as far as a requirement goes. If it were a new building, we would. Um, but, uh, but it is, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, it, it's probably didn't have a lot of lighting when it was constructed and, and uh, just kind of a, a grandfather in situation. Okay. And um, uh, did uh, we didn't receive any negative feedback on when you sent out the feelers? It did not. Okay. When you gentlemen ready to make a motion. I'll make a motion uh, that we uh, 
accept the conditional use and put it under B, the conditional use will not adversely affect other property in the area which it is located in. And I, I make a motion that we accept it. Okay. I second. Okay, let's vote. Ty? Aye. Dave? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Okay, it's approved. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your appreciation, uh, uh, time and consideration. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you. The next is appeal case 0920-3M, request by Jeff Henschel for a variance to the front yard fence height from three and a half feet to accommodate decorative wrought iron six foot fence at 278 Rain Tree Drive. Okay, as far as the public hearing comments go, we actually did receive an email today um, from Jonathan Kotler at 110 Valley Brook Drive. And the questions that he had, um, will there be a setback requirement from the roadway and stop sign? My concern is for people attempting to pull out of Valley Brook's dead end will have an impaired view of traffic. This is already a bit of a blind entrance from the opposite direction with those coming over the hill. Number two, what are the design requirements that will be enforced when establishing a wrought iron fence? Will there be bricking, any wooden, wooden slats or standing wood? Is this fence ornamental in nature? Will this be a fence that blocks the view of the homes or blocks vision of those turning out of Black Valley Brook or looking through the fence? Number three, why the variance? What is the need or requirement that is facilitating this request? If the current ordinance requires only a three and a half foot fence, then any request should show a specific need or requirement, not a want or desire to grant the variance. Number four, has Mr. Henschel informed any of his neighbors of his intent to put a high fence up a high fence yard? I live across the corner and haven't seen if anyone has even moved into the property. It has looked to be empty for a few weeks since this property just sold. The only notice received was this appeal and public notice. I would have liked to have met Mr. Henschel prior to the public notice in my mail. Unfortunately, I have a prior engagement that prevents me from joining the online meeting tonight, please confirm receipt of this email. Uh, and so I've, I emailed him after that, I emailed him the staff report that you all received um, that answers quite a few of those questions um, in terms of you know what the design is and what the nature of the request and uh, the reasoning for the request. Um, but I did just wanna enter those questions and comments into public record. And was that, did you say Jonathan Kotler? Uh, Jonathan, yes, that's correct. K-O-T? K-O-T-L-E-R. Yeah, okay. Mr. Henschel, would you like to uh, talk to us about your appeal? I would, thank you. And I, I cut out for the first part of that, but um, yeah, I'm happy to talk about it. Um, this property is very unusual in that the Corps of Army Corps of Engineers owns the rear of the property leading up to the back porch. And then my neighbor to the right of us, basically his property line runs along our house um, to the, what I think is the west side, the other uh, left side of the, the rear of the property that we own runs along our neighbor's driveway. So really the only usable portion of the yard is in the front yard. Um, we have three dogs, two of which are deer chasers. Um, this request is simply about them so that we can play ball, let them go to the bathroom. They're not outside dogs. They wouldn't be a nuisance. The big one, the Bernese mountain dog, um, is, stands on its hind legs at about five feet, can easily jump a 42-inch fence. Um, we've had one instance where he got out and chased some deer in the neighborhood and created lots of chaos. Um, so I think this is the public safety issues for both deer and cars in the neighborhood. And, and uh, he has, he's a rescue dog, uh, very kind, but he, he has an intense drive to chase deer. So I think um, an electric fence, and he also has like a, like a double two layered fur. So I don't think an electric fence would be an effective choice. Plus my wife just feels strongly about shocking devices, traumatizing the dog. Um, we do not have an HOA. I've talked with, I'm not sure who that neighbor is. We just 
moved in this weekend. Um, but I've spoken with the neighbors on both sides and across the street. They are okay with this request. You know, this being a wrought iron black, you know, um, attractive fence. Um, and you could tell with the pictures um, that were in your summary that the, you know, I may be using this term wrong, but it's a very, the house compared to the street is very low grade or, you know, is a steep uh, decline to the house. So that when you, um, if I could install a fence that were five feet, 10 to 12 feet off of the street, it would appear lower um, than, than a house that were on a flat property. Um, of course, we would have large gates in the front for emergency services that would always be open. The water meter would be outside of the fence. Um, and, and I don't know if I'm joking about this, but I've heard there's a zoning ordinance that allows for horse fencing for up to five feet in the front yard. So You're breaking up. We just lost you. You kind of got frozen there at an important part. <laughs> But he is correct. Oh, there are with a certain size property, you can have uh, horses. You're, you're still froze up. Yeah, but he, yes, with a certain size yard, you actually can have horse fencing now up to five feet, um, which is the horizontal slats with the mesh backing on it. So that's correct. Absolutely. Okay, I don't know if Mr. Hensher is finished or not, and there are a couple questions for him. How do we? I'm sorry. I'm... Go ahead. I can hear you now. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, I'll start. I had one. The line of vision is a is a question I I would have too, in terms of people being able to see as they're driving and turning the corner, etc. Uh, and for that, I asked two questions. Then, and one is, do you plan on growing anything? on the fence, uh, vines or anything that would obstruct the view. Uh, and no. the second one is, did you consider cutting that point off, turning the corner a little bit differently rather than making it a real tight V there, but uh, just uh, cutting the corner a little bit sooner? Um, you're talking about the, I assume, the, the point at which that comes up to the stop sign at the, where the two yeah. streets intersect. Yes. I, I mean, that was just, um, I was just running along the property line, so I wouldn't have a problem cutting that corner, um, which probably cost me a little less to do that. Um, so that's not a problem. And no, I wouldn't grow anything on, on the fence that would obscure the view or anything like that. Okay. I would uh, just, uh, as a not terribly important, but I have a six inch fence that the deer jump into o over frequently. It's not a problem for them at all, but. Uh, at least your dogs can't jump out the other way, I guess. So. Um, you said <laughs> six inches. I think you mean six feet. I guess I did. Yes. Okay. And and I I was asking for five just for better consideration. I mean, I you know I didn't want to be greedy to ask for six, but um, you know that's, that's where I was coming from. Gotcha. Um. I have, you have a question? Yeah, I have. Other than several, questioning my have, ability to speak properly. <laughs> Go ahead. I have uh, several questions. Um, so one, my first one is the educational point, Sydney. Um, so like, for example, in my neighborhood, I live in Henderson Mill. My fence, I don't know if it's different or not. My, my, my fence is taller than me. And the whole neighborhood is that way. A lot of them are. It's a wood fence. So why is there a difference here, three and a half feet to five feet? Is it because it's iron? What is the deal here? So any, this is a front yard fence. Anything that is from the front corners of your house back, uh, you can actually have up to a seven foot privacy fence. Um, but our ordinance says that anything that crosses the front plane of the house um, has to be limited that at 42 inches, that three and a half feet, uh, and be decorative in nature. And that's just... Um, that's the way it's been for quite some time. So he is asking for a variance to allow it to be up to five feet, still be decorative uh, in nature. He's not necessarily trying to, to do the privacy thing, but he does need a little more height um, to contain his pups. Now, uh, my second question is, uh, now 
we're talking about the the subject is front yard fence height. Do we consider style or anything like that? Because in the bottom here it says applicant is to provide a picture of the proposed style of fence in location at the meeting. So do we need to see this picture. Well, it actually so was sent to us in one of the later communications from Sydney. It is a broad iron fence. It has a very uh, unobstructed view. Yeah, that's correct. This afternoon I sent the actual image, but he's not asking for a variant oh, yeah. of the material because the decorative wrought iron fence is allowed as a front yard fence material. It looks nice as a fence. Dave? I have no questions. Ty, anything else for you? Um, no, I, I guess I'm good. Um, um, you know, since it is a wrought iron fence and not a wood fence, like I was trying to suggest to my, yeah, my house is for the front yard, um, I'm ready to vote. Okay. I just um, wanted to... Well, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Go ahead. Did, did uh, the gentleman at 109 is actually, I got him up on Google Earth. He's right across the street from Ring Tree from the house. So according to what Sydney has, are we satisfactory in everything he's asking about in there? You said he sent him the paperwork, which satisfies most of what it was. So what are the other items that we... That All the other, I don't know, probably 15 questions into four. Um, yeah, so, I mean, is it pretty much... I, the only thing that we didn't address in this conversation was him talking to his neighbor, even though he just said, well, really, he moved in this weekend, so the opportunity wouldn't have been there yeah first. okay other than that i mean this notice serves as that so okay. um you know other than that i think the questions that the neighbor had have been addressed both okay, in okay. Conversation. and he was the only uh, questioner everybody else was in support that, oh, we didn't have any other um uh, calls or, or no against on it okay i'm ready to vote okay a motion i'll make a motion uh how do we how do we add that in instead of uh driving it up to the point at the crossroads there at the stop sign we maybe cut it back and instead of a, a point kind of go across there how do we how do we denote that uh sydney in the motion i'm i'm very it's, sorry let, let me offer a suggestion if, if we could uh, have it uh just move back like uh uh, eight foot from the point on either side and connect those two uh, points that would uh, uh, give some relief to that line of sight. Would that yes. work, Jeff? Since it's a variance, yes. really nothing, we can't put conditions on the variance. How, however, uh, what we would do is, um, since it is a, a sight distance issue potentially, uh, when, he, when that, uh, once that, that's put in, uh, we would look at that and, and determine that that would be, you know, the, the wishes of the BZA and, and, and honestly, we want to make sure that it is safe and, you know, as, as possible. And uh, I think that that would be a, a good way to uh, ensure that. You can work that out with Mr. Henschel then offline. Yes, sir. Okay. And additionally, our ordinance does say that a, like a corner side yard fence or something like that would have to be half the distance of the setback. Um, so if he had a 30 foot setback, which is fairly typical, he'd have to be 15 feet off the road. Correct. So I haven't looked at that particular plat to see what that requirement would be, but there is some, okay. uh, some coverage there, but we, we can work that out with Mr. Henschel as well, okay. and the city engineer. Then your motion that Dave is just to approve the appeal. Uh, um, do I need to approve that the variance is a minimum variance that will relieve such difficulty or hardship for the use of the land since since the uh, Corps of Engineers and the way it's laid out, or do I just say? It just meets the conditions of uh, the findings of fact. It has to meet all of them for a variance, so. All right, I, I uh, make a motion that uh, we accept the variance. Uh, from, uh, I second. Okay, uh, I have one more question for Mr. Henschel. What does your dog think about the clothes you make him wear for the pictures? <laughs> Uh, I'd yeah, jump over can... a fence too if I had to. <laughs> All right, let's vote. Uh, Ty. Aye. Dave. Aye. I vote aye. Unanimous. Thank you. you are, your appeal is uh, accepted. Thank you.
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Uh, our next one is appeal case number 0920-4M. A request by Jeffrey Brown for a variance to the side yard setback from 10 foot to eight foot for an attached carport at 209 Riverwood Drive. And do we have anybody here who wanted to uh, take advantage of the public hearing? Apparently not, therefore the public hearing is closed. Sydney, anything you wanna say before we uh, have the applicant start? Uh, he, essentially, he's asking for a two foot variance to the side uh, setback to extend his existing carport to cover more of that um, paved area there. It is within, within the character of that area. Um, there's quite a few that have popped up that have not gone through the proper procedures. And so Mr. Brown is just trying to go uh, through, the, through the right channels and get this approved. Um, and he is here as well, if you have any- Mr. Brown. <laughs> Hello, how you guys doing tonight? Fine, thanks. Good, well, thanks for taking time to listen to me. Um, Basically, all I did, I, I extended my existing driveway uh, forward 20 feet, kind of to the back of my house to give me more parking, um, parking area. Plus, uh, I just need some protection for my vehicles there. Um, also, um, got a lot of trees from my neighbors alongside that has a lot of uh, sap that comes out in the this time of year, and it constantly causes me to work on my vehicles and I'm just needing more protection from that and the weather. Um, but I've, I've got a patio in the back that's got a cover on it and I just extended my driveway out and just wanna uh, have a little coverage there to protect. And my setback on that side is 10 feet, but I only need to go about eight feet over from it. So that's, that's what I was asking for. Okay, thank you. Board members, questions? I have a question. So um, basically this carport is just gonna cover the existing concrete that's already there? That is correct. Um, um, how far from the end of this carport structure to the neighbor's, uh, uh, I guess little property dwelling, uh, external attachment or whatever that is over there? Uh, let's see. Uh, the, you're talking about on the picture, the overhead? Um, well, I'm looking at Google Earth. I see like a maybe in a detached garage there on that side or something. Yeah, that's actually forward of where I'm going to be. I'm back behind that area. Uh, it, from the edge of that building to the edge where the carport would be, or the corner of the carport would be approximately 15 feet probably. 15 feet. So I have a, just a learning question for staff, I guess. Um, and I'm, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I kind of heard this before where if, if two dwellings get too close together, isn't there like in the, in the easement there, isn't there some type of fire codes that kick in, like you have to have water sprinklers or something on the grass. Where am I thinking about it and where am I wrong or what am I talking about? Help me out. You're talking about a house that cannot be more than 10 feet from another building as fire hazard. Okay, um, so this is 15 feet, so we're good on that, right? Right. It's it's much further from the other house than 15 feet, but it's you know, one house to one building to another cannot be closer than 10 feet for fire code. Okay. Okay. So it sounds like we're good on that one then too. Um, okay, that's all the questions I have. Dave. No question for me. Motion. Um, I one more question for Sydney. I'm okay. sorry. Sure. Um, did we have any negative feedback on this one? No, we didn't hear anything. We had one question from a neighbor um, that lived in the corner side yard uh, because he thought there was a 10 foot easement there. However, he was not looking at the correct property line. This this property line actually does not have the 10 foot easement in the side. But other than that, we did not get any calls or complaints or anybody saying anything about it. Okay. And no utility issues that we have to be concerned about? Correct. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm ready to vote. Motion, please. 
I make a motion that we uh, grant the uh, request based on finding the fact A, B, C, and D. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? All right, let's vote. Ty? Aye. Dave? Aye. And I vote aye as well. It passes. Thank you very much, Mr. Brown. Thank you very much for your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. The next one is case number 90, excuse me, 0920-5M, request by John, I hope it's Fleeter Type A for a variance on the side yard setback from 10 foot to five foot for an attached car port at 126 Robin Hood Circle. And I'm sorry if I blew your name, John, but uh, you can correct me there. Sure, and this is going to be a little bit of deja vu here. So um, he's asking for the variance from 10 feet to go to five feet uh, off of that sideline. And again, um, when he got this house, it was a gravel drive and he's paved it and now is wanting to do an addition there. Uh, and I'll let him kind of take it from here. Okay, John. Go ahead, John. Oh, you're muted. Uh, still muted. Is that on his end, Lauren? You're still muted, John. To unmute it, is it? Yeah, go to the bot. Take your pointer down to the bottom left and see if the uh, your uh, options come up. Okay, I think I unmuted. Thank you. There you go. For your there time. You go. Okay, go right ahead, sir. Yes, uh, as uh, Miss Simpson said, uh, well, I uh, poured a concrete slab, a driveway, and I would like to build uh, a carport, attached carport uh, on the slab. Uh, the width will be 19 inches. Uh, with the five remaining, uh, I mean, 19 feet, sorry, with five remaining feet to the line, uh, to, to the property line. Uh, the reason we ask uh, is because we both, my wife and I are aging. Uh, I have uh, severe health problems. I am uh, both heart attack and uh, cancer survivor. And uh, if we were to move the carport uh, in the backyard, uh, a detached carport, we would have to walk, you know, on a slopey terrain. Uh, and uh, yeah, we want to protect both our cars, but most, uh, mostly ourselves. Uh, but, and uh, uh, as I explained, uh, uh, probably in my uh, uh, letter, even if we were to move uh, the carport back in the backyard and uh, det detach it, I still have to ask for a variance because of the deck that I have in the, in the back of the house. So we, we still need for a two car uh, uh, two car carport. We still uh, need uh, a, a variance. So um, okay. that is my that Anything is my. Else, John? Uh, it would still remain uh, like 17, 18 feet to the house of the next neighbor if you approved it. Good. Okay. Thank you for that information. Okay. Ty, Dave, questions? No question for me. Dave, you said no? No question. Okay. Um, yeah. Just a question for Sydney. Did we have any negative feedback on this one? Uh, we did not. In fact, we got a letter, and I apologize for not re remembering it at the time of the public hearing, but we got a letter of support from the neighbor most directly impacted by this. And it says, I, the undersigned Christian Morris, residing at 128 Robin Hood Circle, have been informed through the public notice that my neighbor 
um, is requesting a variance of the side yard setback from 10 feet to five feet in order to build a carport. I would like to inform you I'm in total agreement with my neighbor's request and have nothing against his intention to place the intended carport at five feet from the property line. So. Okay, good. He's good. right next door. I got him pulled up here. It looks great. That's good news. Thank you. Ty, anything else? No, sir. Thank you. I'm ready to vote. Okay. Could I have a motion, please? I make a motion that we approve the request uh, by findings of fact on A, B, C, and D. I'll second. Good, moved and seconded. Uh, please let me know how you vote, Ty. Aye. Dave. Aye. And my vote is aye as well. Uh, John, it's approved. Uh, thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you so very much for approving. Okay. Have a good night. Tonight. We'll move on to uh, number 0920-6M, request by William Kantz for a variance to the front yard setback from 60 feet to 54 feet to allow the roof overhangs at 125 Twin Bay Drive. And I don't see a... Oh, there you are. Okay. I'm You're here. I'm the side there. All right. Is there any, uh, anybody that wanted to speak at the public hearing? We did not have any uh, emails or anything on the public hearing for this one. Okay, then I closed the public uh, hearing in that case. And uh, if you would like to go ahead, William, that would be great. Sure. I'll, uh, good evening, everybody. Let me just share my screen real quick. It might be easier to do that. Let's see. I'm sorry. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. Can you see my screen? Nope. Okay. How about now? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so um, this is at 125 Twin Bay Drive. Um, I noticed uh, in the last a few days ago when the um, the letter was sent out, they showed a picture of another house. They did not actually show my house, so they must have just had the wrong picture there. Um, but I think I can explain it just it subsequently been corrected, I believe. Oh, good, good, good. I didn't, I didn't see an email like that. I've been taking my son to tennis lessons and stuff. So I don't know if that was corrected. Hopefully it was, I'm not sure. Um, it matters that much. Cause I think I can explain right here. Um, you know, what it is that I, that I would like to do. Um, the house is on a, basically on a corner lot and the setback on the corner lot in this area is a 60 foot, uh, setback. So it's pretty extensive setback. Um, and so the foundation of the house is right on the setback line and the eave that comes out the front of the house is about 12 inches, I think already inside of the, the 60 foot setback. And basically all I really wanna do is just make a more, uh, you know, beautiful home. And um, I'm asking for, you know, a few feet of the roof line to be able to come out on the front side into that setback. And um, since I turned in the application to you all, I think it was anywhere from two to six feet because I didn't really know. And now I, f I feel confident that it's, I'm really asking for like a four foot um, variance to allow just the roof line to go in the setback. I'm not gonna put a structure in the, in the setback. So I wanna make sure that I was clear on that. So I had these arrows here just showing where that 60 foot setback line is. Hopefully y'all can see that. And then um, this is kind of like a highlighted area uh, that I'm talking about. So this, the one on the left of the west side is already there, but again, it's just 12 inches away from the house. The house is really flat. It looks really flat. I'm trying to give it a little bit more depth and I think it'll look, you know, much nicer when it's done. This is a rendering. This is not the final rendering, but I would like to show it to you anyway. Um, um, and if you look on the, on the left side there, actually let me move this over just a little bit. Can you all see in the upper right hand corner, the right elevation? Yes. That's sort of the idea of what it is that I want to do from a side profile. And it's really not four feet. It's really about three feet beyond the one foot that's already over the setback. So the setback is where, is where the foundation is. And um, so also, if you look, this is like a new addition that I want to add. And so I need to get the variance prior, prior to having the architect finish obviously finish the drawings and stuff but this little line here that you see is is about three feet okay 
And then on the other end, I'll see if I can blow that up for you. Oh, well. One second. I guess you can see that other side as well on the left side. So that's it. It's just a, a variance to have the roof line and the setback on the front of the house. And I think, um, I think three feet or four feet would be adequate. Um, and I don't really need six feet on that. Okay. Anything else, sir? No, thank you so much. Well, thank you. Let's see if we have any questions, Dave or Ty. No questions for me. Sydney, no negative feedback. No, we didn't receive anything on this one. Okay, I'm ready to vote. You like to make a motion? I make a motion that we approve the request based on the findings of fact, uh, satisfying A, B, C, and D. I'll second that motion. Thank you, it's moved and seconded. Let's now vote. Ty, your vote? Aye. Dave? Aye. And my vote is aye as well, so it is approved. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much for your time. Y'all have a nice evening. You have a good one too. Okay. Okay, uh, we have the next one is Appeal case 0920-7M, request by Donald Crafton for a variance to the size 40 by 50 and conditional use of the location, front yard, and material, hardy plank, uh, of an accessory building at 122 Tyne Bay Drive. Uh, anybody here to speak to that? Apparently not, so. Oh, yes, the, oh, as far as the public hearing is concerned? Public hearing, yes. Okay, um, and I emailed you this afternoon a, a list of the neighbors that were in support. Um, we didn't get any calls or complaints or concerns about this. Um, and Mr. Crafton is here as well to present his case on the, and I will say on the Hardy Plank matter, um, our ordinance does say that the any accessory structure that's in the side or front yard would have to be made of the same material as the house. Um, the house is a flat stone, and this is a hardy cement, you know, board with stack stone or flat stone uh, trim around it. Um, so it would really be ultimately the the body that would make the determination as to whether or not this material would be approved is you. So that is on this as well, just for clarification and, and BZA determination. So just wanted to point that out. And then Mr. Crafton is here as well. Okay, before Sydney, just to clarify what you just said, mm -hmm. uh, we cannot speak to the Hardy Board issue or we can? You can, yes, you can. Okay, okay, thank you. Mr. Crafton. Yes. Can you hear me? Would you like to add to Sydney's presentation? <laughs> <laughs> All right, can you hear me? Yes, we can. All right, it's just a basic garage, 40 by 50. I have quite a few vehicles and a boat. I would like to store in the winter time to protect the, uh, the boat and the, the cars I have and, and the truck. I'm pretty well, the shape of the, the lot, I'm pretty well maxed out in the back. And I've got I, I, the issue of the hardy board, we can possibly stone the, the whole structure. Uh, I just have to check the price and everything if the hardy board is gonna be a problem. And uh, that's basically about all I have to say about it. It's just a 40 by 50 garage with a 12 foot door on one side to, to pull a RV or a boat in with a double door on the other side and then the entrance door on, on one side. And uh, gonna have it make it, the roof line and the shingles and everything will, will match the house. We've already checked in, make sure we can get everything to match. I don't want to do anything that would deter the appearance of my house or devalue it in any way. I plan on putting a drive, an aggregate drive to the structure and have a 
like a U shape where you could go around the existing drive I got now into uh, into the street. So that should look pretty nice to match the existing drive I have. Uh, basically, that's about all I have to say. With the shape of the lot, I can't do anything in the rear. I've got plenty of yard in the front, but but nothing left in the rear. <coughs> I've got a lot of core property that I cut every every time we cut, <laughs> and uh, just a, appearance wise, I I just want to make it match match the house best I can. Okay, that's really Thank about you. all I have to say. Okay, Ty, David, questions for the applicant. Um, question for staff. It's probably just me learning. Uh, I'm looking at the picture of the structures, the boat uh, structure and the regular car garage structure. Um, is that height within limits, Sydney, I assume? So that was really more for reference of the material that he's going to be using and the color. Um, he would be limited to a one story structure as the little hand sketch drawing shows. Um, so he would be limited to the current height of his house. Looks like the photo is more for materials and then the sketches. Of oh, so the photo that I'm looking at is not what is reality. No, I thought the tall no, if you read photo right was below it, If you read right below it, it, it talks about the materials above and then the sketch below. Okay. Okay. Right. Gotcha. I'm, I'm good. Okay. I'm good now. And I'm color, good. color wise too, that I thought the color was close to what I have at the, in the house now. Dave? The stone. No questions. I just, um, could we put uh, a percentage of uh, flat stone instead of doing the entire structure with flat stone, 50% of it or 50% of the front? Would that suffice? Just a question. I know that we don't even have to, but that was a question for me. As a question, yeah, as a since that's a, the materials would atten, would essentially be a conditional use, um, you can put conditions on it um, that you can, yeah. Is the hardy board totally out then? Well, I, I, not necessarily. I, I, I kind of blended in with the house about, you know, if you you know, my suggestion would be to use about 50% of the flat stone and the rest would be hardy board, uh, a mix of, uh, but it's not out for me either way. Yeah, that, that may still look nice and work with the, with the house. My, my suggestion would be, I don't think I would accept anything that didn't have uh, the stone on the front and on the side that faces your next door neighbor might feel like I could compromise on the back and the other side. But I think the part that the neighbors have to look like, is that the C's that live next door to you? The, to the uh, right as you're facing the front door? Well, in any case, the uh, that would be my, uh, I, I think it needs to match the house, uh, particularly the part that can be seen by the neighbors. Yeah, yeah. I can see your point there. Yeah. Ty, do you have any additional thoughts? No, I was just, uh, when you guys were talking, I was just channeling what we kind of came up with for the uh, uh, the type of structure we worked with back in March, similar type deal where we said, okay, uh, skirt around the bottom uh, to make it look a little bit nicer and presentable. I'm okay with making it plain on the back and stuff like you guys were talking about, so I'm good with whatever you guys are coming up with. Dave, do you have any thoughts on that? I think I would agree with you. Um, definitely the side facing the neighbor in the frontage, um, uh, at least the majority of the frontage, that 50% up or something. But um, uh, I, I could live with the back being all hardy board. And at least 50% up, is that what you said? On the, for me, it would be on the front, but definitely your neighbor, so it kind of blends in with the home. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to make a formal motion to to move in that direction, but. 
Uh, Sydney, I'm sorry, I'm having a difficult time hearing. Dave, could you uh, interpret what he just said? Okay, yeah, so yeah, so Dale just said that he was thinking uh, that on the front that it should be at least 50% uh, flat stone like the house and, and possibly the side that faces the neighbor as well. Um, but the, he's fine with it being hardy on the back and the, you know, the other sides that are not facing. Um, so did I say that right, Dale? <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, but, you know, Don, is that, uh, Don, Mr. Crafton, is that something that you're, are you comfortable with those conditions being placed on it as well? Yeah, I don't, I don't see a problem with that. I, I just want, want it to fit in with the house myself. Uh, probably do three sides, all three sides and the rear just hardy board because it, the, the lot slants off and it's going to be a little lower than the drive and we'll have to, to deal with a drainage problem once we get there. But uh, yeah, that, that should work, I would think. Rather than stoning the whole thing, I, I may have to back off money-wise if we had to stone the whole thing. Okay, Ty, any other questions? No, I'm ready to vote. Would you like to make a... Uh, um, how about motion? Dale, since uh, uh, you guys are the ones proposing this and I wanna make sure it's it's squared away and right. Okay. I, I would make a motion that we accept it on the uh, condition that the side and the frontage be stone, the rear can be hardy board, um, under those conditions, I would I would go for it. Uh, and is that uh, just for clarity? Is that a hundred percent or fifty percent? The front, at least fifty percent. The side would would to blend in. I think would need to be a hundred percent on the side. I didn't. I didn't hear. Okay, he said the front fifty percent and the side a uh, hundred percent. And the rear could be all hardy. And the rear could be all hardy. I've only got one neighbor, neighbor on that side to do 100%. Okay. You're thinking about appearance from the drive from the street? Well, when they come around, when they come around, just kind of blends in from home to home. Uh, if they come around that circular road behind it there. Don, you uh, you want to add to that or? or uh, I'm sorry, I, I hate this, but I'm going to have to ask Sydney to, or someone to repeat what you just oh, said. Oh, he said, Don, do you... Uh, have anything you want to add to that? Well, I'm not sure add to what. That's a problem. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, that he's basically he's thinking that 100% on the side, even though there's just that one neighbor uh, to kind of help blend in with as far as the view goes. And everything so like stone on the neighbor side, uh, and half stone on the front. A, a mix, yes. 50%, at least 50%. Because it's mostly garage door anyway on the front, right? right. So, uh, but you, let's say uh, stone say halfway that, halfway up. Could we? Could I say maybe on the front a water table uh, might look better than the fifty percent? Okay, uh, is that what about what 30, is, what is inches, that the, thirty inches? Uh, it's usually typically up to. I think it's about 30. But... Window. I don't know that he had a window on there. Um, but okay, typically... so we're just going to call it water table and whatever that definition turns out to be. And then the so... back and the other side will be acceptable if, if he uses hardy plank uh, painted in a color that is uh, uh, compatible with the rest of the, uh, the house. Right? Correct. Okay. Ty, can you second that? Well, uh, can I make sure I understand? Sure. <laughs> okay, so let's go side by side here. Um, the front, which is the garage doors, we're talking just a skirt level stone, which is 30, 36 inches, whatever that is. Right. The side facing the neighbor, 100% stone. Right. And then the other two sides can be 100% hardy board. Is that what I understood? 
I think that's what's been proposed. Right. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I second that. Okay. I've got a question. You don't feel like it, it would look better 30% stone all the way around the three, three front sides instead of stoning just at one side then hardy board across the rear stoning three sides up to 36 inch whatever the water table well That's actually at this point we're we should be voting but the uh are discussing just with the board but uh i think i think we're getting into an area where it becomes extremely subjective as to what looks good and what doesn't look good yeah and I think what we've done is we've backed off what is the typical thing, the thing that's required uh, to a point that uh, uh, is, is significantly less stone than, than what the house is. So I, I, I don't feel like, uh, like we're doing anything that I'm uncomfortable with. Dave, are you all right? I'm, I'm fine. I'd like with to that think. as far as your motion. Okay, Mr. Crafton, I think that's the way we're gonna do the motion. We'll vote on that in any case, if everyone is ready. Ty, your vote? Aye. Dave? Aye. I vote aye as well. So, uh, Mr. Crafton, that is uh, approved, your appeal okay. in uh, the way it was just stated. All right, is, thank you. Uh, water table height stone in front, and and all stone on the side that faces uh, the people to your right as you face your house, and then hardy plank on the other two sides. Okay. And colors that are compatible with the house itself. All right. Okay. All right. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Have a good evening. You too. Okay, our uh, last one is appeal case number 0920-8M, request by Brittany Higdon for a conditional use permit for a major home occupation for a part-time hair salon at 207 Tyne Bay. Is there anyone here who wants to speak to that other than the applicant, public hearing? Okay, the public hearing is closed. Uh, Sydney, do you have any introduction you want to make or any any notices that anyone in the neighborhood has provided to you? Sure. Yeah, we didn't get any uh, calls, complaints, questions, or anything uh, about the the request. Um, and you got the staff report saying Miss Hignan is wanting to do this basically part time, about three days a week. Um, and she's here herself just to kind of present her case. If you have any questions for her. Okay. And she has been very patient, so thanks for that. Yes, <laughs> yes you got the short straw, Brittany. Sorry. <laughs> That's no problem. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Fantastic. Yeah, so I'm looking to open a salon suite in my house. I have a 12-foot by 10-foot room directly off of uh, my downstairs basement that the clients would come in directly from outside, step right into my salon suite. Um I'm able to provide adequate parking, I believe. My driveway is a uh, hundred foot setback from the road. So pretty private back here. Um, and I'm a single operator and we'll have no employees. Um, and if there's anything else, I'd be happy to answer it. Okay. I appreciate your consideration. Thank you. Uh, Ty and Dave, we have some precedent here recently, many times actually. Uh, any specific questions you'd uh, like to have ask? Yeah. So yeah, so based on uh, previous uh, times we've done it this year, um, I like to keep it congruent, I guess. So I'll ask you, are you going to have any employees? No employees. Okay, just you. Okay. Myself. Um, yeah, this thing, uh, uh, the paperwork that Sydney provides, it says you're allowed up to two employees, but we can put conditions on that. The reason why is because it limits the number of cars and traffic and stuff going on. Sure. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank Dave. you. Nothing for me. I think we can spell it out in the uh, motion. You make the motion. Yeah, I'll make a motion, but uh, this would only apply to uh, Miss Higdon that 
it doesn't go with the property. The conditional use will not go to the with the property. Should she sell, move, it would be only for her business uh, during her dur duration of living there. Uh, I would make a motion that we grant this, but again, it is only for her. It will not go with the property. All right, Ty. Um, I'll second that, and then I would like to add an amendment. Uh, well, okay, uh, it's been moved and seconded. What would you like to amend? Do you have a motion to amend? I would like to put in there a condition for no employees. Is that the amendment? Yeah, that's the amendment. All right. Do you agree to that, David? Can we add that to your motion? Do you want to vote? I, I would agree to that. Okay, so we'll put that uh, as part of the motion. Uh, now, with that motion then, uh, where we do not let the uh, conditional permit move on with the, uh, the, the ownership of the house and that there be no employees, uh, we'll take a, a vote on that, Ty. Aye. Dave? Aye. I agree with it as well, aye. So the, uh, it's approved. Uh, Brittany, and thank you very much for being here this evening. Thank you all very much. Take thank care. you. Have a good night. Thanks. You too. Okay. Uh, unless anybody has any other business, I will report, re-report, but Sydney's already told us there is no meeting next month. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't <laughs> promise for November because we've already got people calling, so... Uh, it's a popular time to want to do different things. <laughs> I'm surprised we're not actually having more requests for small businesses in the house. Uh, Absolutely. I think there's probably a lot of that going on. We just don't know about it. That's correct. And what I didn't <laughs> say is that two of these variance requests, all of their neighbors have gone up and put up all these structures uh, and gone up to the property line without permission, without building permits, nothing. And these guys are doing it the right way. And I'm like, oh my gosh, do we just, I mean, if we really started to enforce these things, you'd be seeing 20. Well, and, and that, yeah. And so that's the thing, you know, years down the road, people, uh, new owners will find out, hey, these aren't are permitted and they're going to have to tear them down or something. That's right. That's exactly right. Or they have to come to the BZA and then get a, uh, variance after the fact, which is a real pain. So, well, good. Thanks everybody for helping me struggle through this. Are we going to have our chairman back next time? <laughs> I think I, he'll be. Do I get extra pay for this one? Yeah, yeah you good. do. You get twice what you normally get. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> All right. Request in too. <laughs> Pat, thanks for your patience. Okay. Um, Pat, well, I, I feel night. like we need to officially move to adjourn. Dave um, moves to adjourn. I second the adjourn. Yeah, yes. Aye. Aye. And David, you say aye. Aye. I say aye. We're done. Hey, Tom. Um, see you tomorrow night. Hey, Have a Don. nice evening. Take care. See you tomorrow night on TV. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Don, yeah. and now that this whole meeting's done, uh, this is Dale <laughs> with an L instead of a V. <laughs> oh, I'm good. What? His, his name is Dale, D-A-L-E, instead of... I know of that. That's what I've been saying. Oh, I thought you'd been saying Dave the whole night. No, I'm the one with the hearing problem, but no, I've been saying... <laughs> I know Dale. Yeah. Know Dale. Dale. <laughs> All right, have a good evening. You say so, Don. Oh. <laughs> yeah. right. YouTube. Everybody can see how funny we are. Good night. I'm out of here. Good Thanks night, everybody. <laughs>